I love being an admin. I love doing bookkeeping. I enjoy those things, but I realized as I continue to grow and scale, I wanted the time and flexibility to be with my kids. And I was sacrificing that by doing my business. So what am I actually passionate about my business? Well, I realized I love the big picture and the growing and the entrepreneur side of it rather mm-hmm. than the service delivery. Hey there, and welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur, investor, and business coach for ambitious women who are boldly taking their business to the next level. And I believe that building a successful business isn't about working 24-7 just to merely meet a revenue goal. What it does take is a unique blend of dedication to purpose, courageous action, and frequently sheer will to overcome the odds that lead to meaningful impact and experiencing a life well lived. In each episode, you'll get to know the women and men who are unafraid to put it all on the line as they share the stories of success and failure that have made them incredible leaders and the magic they gift the world with. As you're listening, and I hope finding value, don't forget to share the Tribe of Leaders podcast with all of your other entrepreneurial friends and to follow us wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am your host, Emmy Kirshner. And today we are all super lucky because I have with me Rachel Luther, who is the CEO of Check Off Your List. It is a virtual assistant company. Rachel started this business well over 10 years ago before virtual assistants and really delegating virtually was even a thing. So Rachel, welcome to the show. I can hardly wait to hear your story because you took a really bold leap in doing something that nobody was really doing. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you for having me first, Emmy. I'm excited to be here. And yes, I did kind of step out on my own and do something new and different at a very young age. And all of that makes things interesting for sure. It all creates <laughs> its own challenges and things of that nature. But yeah, that's that was many years ago and we've come a long way since then for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So share with everybody a little bit of the background of how you started your business and why. I think it's so interesting and I love that you were balancing a number of different things then and you're still balancing a number of different things and different projects now and doing it with ease and grace. Well, hopefully, yes. (laughs) Yeah, so I started Check Off Your List initially to stay home with my daughter. I was pregnant and wanted to be available to be there for her, to raise her and be at home. But I also know that with my background, I had that entrepreneurial bug. And I knew that I wanted to do something outside the home as well and tried to figure out what that was. And at the time, virtual assisting was becoming a new thing. It was not an original idea to me, but it made a lot of sense to me at that time when I heard of it, because I had grown up in a family where my parents were entrepreneurs and I had seen them through grit and hard work, which is exactly what their generation did to succeed. Mm -hmm. They ran an amazing restaurant through their hard work, seven days a week, working dawn till dusk, that type of thing. And I knew I didn't want to do that (laughs) when as an entrepreneur. And so I realized this whole concept of a virtual assistant was amazing. That is exactly what my parents needed. And so it just resonated with me personally, as I thought this would have changed so much about their life. There was a lot of freedom in running a business and they really appreciated that the freedom in, you know, your income is as big as you want it to be and you can grow Mm -hmm. and there's always that potential. But if they weren't in the restaurant serving and cooking food, they didn't make money. And so how could they have been more productive and virtual assistants made so much more sense to me. And that wasn't a thing then it was just becoming new. And so I latched onto that and thought, I can sell that. I can do that. This is amazing. Everybody needs to know about it. And I just, you know, very pregnant self went around and started networking and selling virtual assistant services. And I was able to be able to work part time mm-hmm. by the time I had my daughter. And because I'm a little bit insane, was even like answering phone calls in labor with clients and, you know, answering emails with a baby in my arm in the hospital bed. And that's just kind of how I was. That's how I was taught. 
And that's how a lot of entrepreneurs make it. That's mm-hmm. how we succeed is because we do what other people wouldn't do and right. aren't committed enough to do. And while that's great, we often lose a lot of our own personal life and the balance and the fun and some of the reasons why we started our business. You fast forward a couple years later, I have another kid and I am getting up way too early to do work and emails before they wake up. They wake up and I jump into mommy mode and I'm doing mommy things with them, put them down for a nap and I'm jumping right back to my computer, rushing back and forth and trying to get done what I can. And I have no life outside of keeping my small children and my small business alive. (laughs) And I loved it, but there were a lot of things that I was missing out on too. I am an actor and that's what I've done since I was little. And I didn't do that for quite a few years in that period of time for a couple reasons. One, when you're pregnant, you're not as marketable. (laughs) And two, I was so busy with all the things in my business as it grew. And I knew at some point something had to give. And I Mm -hmm. think a lot of us entrepreneurs get to that point. Like we get our business to a point where this is as big as I can grow it. This is as big as my grit. This is as big as my knowledge. This is as big as me where I'm at. And so then when I really started to succeed exponentially was when I started looking outside of myself and I started to really practice what I preached. I would tell my clients, you need to outsource. You need to let me do this because this is what I'm good at and you need to focus elsewhere. And I realized that I needed to do the same thing in check off your list. And so I started outsourcing myself. Like I started hiring team members and really prioritizing at that point, Why did I start my business? Mm -hmm. What made me want to start a business? And it wasn't to sit at my computer and do bookkeeping, which is also my training and background. I'm a little bit dual trained that way. Got a very creative side, have a numbers side. And so I didn't start my business to sit in front of my computer and do bookkeeping. I started it to have time to be with my children. And I wasn't being able to do anything well at that point because I was trying to do it all. So Mm -hmm. I started outsourcing those things that were taking me from exactly what I started my business or what I said yes to being a mom or any of those things I said yes to, I was starting to outsource the other things so that that I could focus on those and do those well and enjoy them because a lot of the enjoyment was missing as I was exhausted and staying up too late and all of that. So that's kind of like my journey as it has grown. Like I started my business to solve the problem that I kind of then created for myself. (laughs) And so, yeah. Yeah. So when you started your business as a virtual assistant, have the services that you offer expanded or changed? What were you doing then and what do you do now? Absolutely. I mentioned my background is in bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And so that is primarily what I sold at first. I sold administrative things, type A personality. I can keep ducks in a row and follow up detail oriented. And so I could really do well the virtual assistant services and the bookkeeping services. And I do have a creative side. So I would dabble in the social media marketing as well. And so that was what it started when it was me, myself, and I running check off your list. And as I expanded, I realized that I could grow even bigger and faster and do better by hiring people who are better at things than me. So I started to realize, you know what? I'm not actually an expert in social media. While I have a good eye for color design, those types of things, I started to hire people who that's what their background and training was in. And those services just exploded. And the same with bookkeeping. While that is my background and my expertise, so I've kept my fingers on that one, but we have bookkeepers who are better trained, more experienced than I was. I was early 20 something when I started my business and you only know what you know at the stage of life you're in. And so as I hired people with more experience and more knowledge, not that I wasn't learning and growing before that, but those services continued to grow and we were able to provide better value to our clients. So that just has continued to grow and it's gone from there as well. So now we have HR that we provide for our our clients to help them bring on team members and maintain client files, employee handbooks. So many people have HR gaps that they don't know about until they're really, really sad they didn't know. (laughs) And we don't know what we don't know. And so we try to help people prevent that. Oh, I wish I'd have documented that. Or I wish we'd have had that in writing 
because now we've got this issue. You hope you never get to that point. And that's what we try to do and help people avoid that in that area. I was to say, I know so many business owners, like they're so busy, the process and the system and the documentation falls off of their, really in their headspace, but off kind of the the table because it's not critical to bringing clients in and keeping clients until there's the problem. Right. It's critical to scalability. And while as wonderful as that sounds, sometimes that's not prioritized. It's often not prioritized enough. And because I can do that later. And so many times we just do the fire maintenance. You know, we put out the fires in front of us and then all of a sudden it's late and well, I'll do that tomorrow. But then new fires come up. And so those types of things, processes and things like that fall behind. Mm -hmm. And that's what a virtual assistant can help make those a reality. As I train people on different things with bookkeeping or as our team grows and develops, part of that is we'll document that so that someone else can have that knowledge too. (laughs) That way- we all benefit and we all know what to do next time. So we're not having this conversation in a, in a month or next week when we need to do that same thing again. And mm-hmm. it saves time in the long run. But I even, who I like procedures and processes, I even pass those along to my virtual assistants because that's not the best use of my time. That's not what I need to be doing. I can impart that information and be like, now you make that look nice in a procedure that somebody else can read and follow and do so that I don't have to do this training again. And that I think is really crucial for scalability. Also the day-to-day surviving, but it's not fire putting out fires, which is often right. where a lot of entrepreneurs function. Yeah. And having that consistent process, particularly from a scalability standpoint, mm-hmm. is where you start getting time back. Because if everybody's doing it the same way, there's fewer errors, there's more satisfaction, and you've mm-hmm. got the step-by-step so that there's just less, there's fewer gaps. Yeah, absolutely. You all of a sudden have a consistent way that something's done. So you know what you're going to get, you know what to expect, and your clients are in the same way. So all of a sudden, everyone's functioning more efficiently because of the consistency. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing and the biggest challenge, I think, in any organization is you establish it, you create it, and then it doesn't stay a living document. It will then, well, we did that. But apps change, things change, and all of a sudden... That's not the best way anymore. So things evolve, but then the processes don't get updated. Right. And then people stop using them because, well, it's not updated. And so that is also like the next step of, and maintenance and <laughs> keep it up. It's a living document. You have to continually, as you work, use it. Yeah. That's why it's there. And I think that's another breakdown. And another thing that while it seems time consuming, it actually saves you time over time. Right. I want to back up a little bit. You had said, you know, you grew up with your parents owning and running a restaurant mm-hmm. and you decided quickly that was not for you because they were in it day in and day out. And you have multiple projects. I mean, you homeschool your kids, you know, you have a podcast, you're an actor, you're running your business, right? How do you get all of those things done and not be working a gajillion hours a day, <laughs> right? Because for me, like- yeah. For short sprints, that's great. Like, I love that, like, sprint, but you Mm -hmm. can't start the marathon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you start looking at productivity and performance, sleeping is critical to performing at a high level. But from the restaurant standpoint, like, until you get to a place where you're owning multiple restaurants, like, you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So so for me, what that looks like is looking at each thing that I have said yes to. So- I choose to audition for a show because I want to be in that production. I want to participate in that theater or be a part of that project. And so I say yes to that for that reason. I say yes to homeschooling because I want to be the biggest voice in my children's lives. Like I want to be there for them, watch them grow up and spend that time with them. So that is why I said yes to that. And saying yes to the podcast. Well, why do I want to do that? I want to help other entrepreneurs prioritize. I want to help them look at their to-do list and say, these are the things I love. This is what I want to get up and do every day, all day long. How can I do more of that? Mm -hmm. And so like, as I look at each of those different things and I can just kind of keep working through all the things, like there are reasons why I said yes. So there are parts of each of those that I didn't really want to say yes to. (laughs) (laughs) Like for homeschooling. You mentioned I homeschool. I homeschool four kids. They range in ages, kindergarten through sixth grade. I never, ever wanted to be a teacher. 
all growing up, I never went through the, I want to be a teacher phase that I can ever remember. So I really could care less what my children's math lesson is or what their writing lesson is or what their science lesson is. So I actually outsource the lesson plans because that's not what I'm passionate about. That's not what I want to do. And that actually was taking me away from the time spent with my children because I would spend hours doing lessons, which I'm not good at. I don't want to do. And so we'd have mediocre at best activities. They were still learning the content, but it was more just the best way that I could get it in front of them and just consume this rather than really catering it to their interests and what is best for them. And so by hiring a tutor to plan lessons every week and just kind of to monitor progress and really do all of that teacher stuff that I didn't want to do, I then have a lot more time to focus and spend time with my kids how I wanted to. And then that same concept frees me up in other areas. So for check off your list, I started out providing the services myself. My ultimate goal was not to sit down on my computer and provide services. That wasn't why I started Check Off Your List. I love being an admin. I love doing bookkeeping. I enjoy those things. But I realized as I continue to grow and scale, I wanted the time and flexibility to be with my kids. And I was sacrificing that by doing my business. So what does that look like? What am I actually passionate about my business? Well, I realized I love the big picture and the growing and the entrepreneur side of it rather mm-hmm. than the service delivery. So I started outsourcing. I found social media experts. I found bookkeeping experts. I found executive assistants who are more detail oriented than I am. And I then found HR experts and developed this whole back office support who does everything better than me that I didn't really sign up for to begin with. And I then have more time to focus on big picture and where is check off your list going? What's our goal? What's our plan? What's next quarter going to look like? And that then has exponential results with the time that I spend because that's where I'm passionate. That's where I make the biggest impact. And so looking at every single thing that way in my life and then outsourcing the rest. Like, so if it's not on that list, who can do it for me? Has to be very creative. There are lots of things that you can outsource that people don't really think about. Right. I think it's really starting to identify like, oh, I don't want to do X task anymore. And particularly now there's so many apps and services Mm -hmm. and people available, whether it's a one-time thing or ongoing to help you gain time and freedom back. I'm curious too, like as you've grown your business, like your role as a leader has shifted completely from leading and running the business to your, yourself mm-hmm. to now you have a team and everybody's there's a you know a culture and a way of being how have mm-hmm. you had to grow and change as yes. your company has grown that is a big thing for sure and one of the first things i did after starting my business and realizing like i'm all in i'm doing this like i have a business not an idea and i hired a business coach and that has been critical i recommend everybody have someone to essentially evaluate and help them pinpoint Mm -hmm. areas where they need to grow. And so that's what I did. And at first it was defining processes and those types of things, like being in real in the nitty gritty of the every little thing about the business. And that because I have four children and I'm in the raising children stage, that seems very much like this toddler stage of leadership and management And that like just the the refereeing and the defining rules and learning the basics, those types of things. And that's kind of where I started like, okay, so we need procedures for this and we need to do this. And this is our process. And this is how we invoice in our, you know, our follow-up and just those types of things and really focusing on the processes and that type of thing, which we talked a lot about ironically. And then from there, I had to start managing a team. And that's a whole different ball game. And mm-hmm. I had to then develop my people skills. And all of a sudden I was so grateful for all those hours waiting tables and being able to do customer service and being able to read between the lines and understand people and look at things from their perspective and all of those customer service skills that I'd acquired. And then I would feel like we've graduated to like the awkward teenage years where things are just continuing to get bigger. Stakes are getting bigger and mistakes cost more and the wins are even bigger though. So it's, it's exciting. And as things grow and continue to change, I then had to deal with higher level decisions and Mm -hmm. management of people who were managing how I was managing. So then like now I'm managing like the high end positions that chalk off your list. And then they have their people that report to them. 
And all of a sudden I'm dealing with very passionate people who love what they do. They're opinionated about they, what they do and they're opinionated about it because they're good at it and they are better at those things to me. And now I am dealing with those dynamics and those people. And I've had to learn how to keep people in their lane and focused on their expertise and what their skills are because they're all very talented and want to help and they're team players and they're all chipping in and it's wonderful. And I'm managing meetings in a completely different way. I'm almost, I'm not running them. I'm almost just like sitting back and observing and mediating, not in a bad way, but in a, well, this is the direction we're going and guiding people who are at such a different level than what I did at the beginning. So there's just been this evolution as we right. grow. And I have had to really focus on my growth as that happens. I've had to grow myself to keep up with my team and my company as I continue to hire people who are better at things than me. That challenges me. And I think that's one of the important things. I was intimidated at first, like asking people to do things that I didn't want to do because like, well, I don't want to do that. I hate to have someone else do that. And then I realized, no, they actually love doing that. And that is what lights them up and gets them out of bed in the morning. And once I realized that and started latching onto that and shooting for the stars, as far as like my team goes and wanting the best on the team that made exponential growth. But I then had to grow exponentially to keep up, which has right. been amazing. And I still have a business coach, do a lot of reading and do a lot of that type of trial by fire mm -hmm. growing and learning, which is in ways the best way to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think having worked in catering mm -hmm. for years and years and years, like having that restaurant experience is such an amazing education in people, process, mm -hmm. sales, <laughs> finance, yes. because the, the margin it's there is not huge ever. <laughs> and you could be in any position and still be have just an incredible business experience. Yes, um, that's actually one of the things that we request on all of our resumes is hospitality experience. Like that counts for something at check off your list. Yeah, cause because you it helps you deal with people and not all people are easy to deal with. And no. it's a great thing to have on under your belt. It seems like a, you know, a first job initiation type of a thing, but it's valuable and you can really learn a lot from it. Oh yeah. I mean, I share with my clients now that some of my best lessons in sales did not come from some fancy sales training. It came from catering and dealing mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. and figuring it out on the fly. Yeah. Uh, there's always a moment there. <laughs> I would love to know because, and it, again, it doesn't matter for like my clients, what size business they have, if they're just getting started or, you know, they're 20 million in revenue, mm -hmm. the CEO still has, I'm going to say a challenging time to make time and keep that time to do the visioning, to do the planning, mm -hmm. because there's always stuff going on. Things don't go according to plan. People have the, you know, got a minute meetings, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How do you structure that so that you can create some just time to be able to think? Yes, that is difficult for sure. In a perfect world, I have my day kind of broken out of when I want to do what, but we've already established I have the variable of children in my life and they don't respect schedules very well. <laughs> their needs, their boo-boos, their whatever, their tantrums don't really necessarily care what's on my calendar at this moment. And so there's that where I do try to schedule and I do try to prioritize, okay, this is what needs to happen on these days. And it doesn't always happen because life happens and that you don't have to have kid as a variable for that right. to happen. It, that's just universal across the board. That's my world right now. But right. It is not unique to me. <laughs> no, I mean, Something it could be, I, I say it could be an employee. It could be yeah. a contractor. It could be a vendor. It could just be the dog throwing up on the carpet. Yeah. Like, yes. It all can send you into just that kind of avalanche or a domino effect of one other, one thing happening after another interrupts your day and more importantly, interrupts your thought process. Yes. And there are like, there are two things I do to combat that. So one of the things is, and this is somewhat dreamy in ways, it doesn't happen as much as I would like it to do, but I love a good workation where I schedule a Airbnb or I disappear for a couple of days, or my husband will take our kids to his parents for two nights and I can be isolated and have dedicated time that I can 
focus. So that's something I did when I started my podcast. I knew I needed to figure this out. I know this is what I'm going to do, but I need a plan. I need to get into this world. And so I did a workcation where I focused on my podcast and this is what we're doing. And that's when I figured out where our niche was and what our message was and all of that in that time, because I had distraction free time to focus. And I say that's dreamy because that's not always realistic. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a great thing to do. And I think everybody, especially at the CEO level, like needs that. But on a day-to-day -day basis, in the most real way, I have to take advantage of every bit of time I have. And so I will frequently keep, I use Trello for this, but keep to-do lists of everything in the different categories and different areas of my life. So I have something for my house and at home. I have a list for homeschooling. I have a list for check off your list. I have a list for the podcast. And then even some of those are broken down. So for check off your list, I have a list for each of my executives and their directives and what I'm working on with them so that whenever I sit down and I have 35 minutes, if everything goes well, to focus and to whatever, I know exactly where I am and my status in that bucket of my life because there are so many and I'm bouncing from so many things. So then the best part of that is the transition time between things is much shorter because I don't have to recollect myself. Mm -hmm. And so taking the time when I'm done at a task before I move on, giving myself that extra five minutes to make sure that things are documented, that everything's updated. I took action on this. So I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to check that off. And I'm going to put this date on that, insert these notes from this conversation, whatever it is, the diligence to do that helps me optimize those times. So if something happens over here, I have to jump up and take care of that. I can come back and know exactly where I was and keep on going without having to reacclimate because that's the problem with like time blocking is such a benefit. It's not always realistic. Like it's great in a vacuum, but if something interrupts you, how can you minimize that interruption? Because it takes you time to get back in. And that's what I've found has been my success in managing several different things and having so many different things going on in my life and so many interruptions at the same time. So that's my practical way to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I do is choose to get up in the morning earlier than I technically want to, but it's so valuable is to get up and have quiet time in the morning to sit down with my husband and we will have coffee. We get up before the kids go to bed. It's only at seven. So it's not even that early because I like my sleep. I like to sleep in seven is early for me to roll out of bed. And my husband is great. Coffee is already made. And my cappuccino is sitting on the table because he's an early morning person. So then we sit down and having that brainstorming session in the morning, like we talk about the day, where are things going and talk about business and work and all the things having that in the morning really helps direct our day. And yeah, absolutely. that helps on a household level, on a business level on all of the things, because we take that time to get together. It doesn't have to be coffee with someone. It could be your coffee in a notebook or tea or no drink whatsoever. And you just that time to get yourself ready for the day. So that also has been very valuable. That's something we started a couple of years ago and have done consistently since we started it. It was one of those things that seemed like a stretch thing at first, like a stretch goal. Let's try this. Let's do this. Yeah. And at least two years later, we're still like every morning, unless someone's sick, I think is the only time we've ever missed it. And that's been huge in a lot of ways. I used to do something similar when my kids were still in school, you know, because I was a single mom and mm -hmm. my younger guy would get off the bus, super excited to share his entire day. And I would inevitably be on a client call. Oh, uh, yes. So we scheduled, I think it was like 3.15 to 3.30, you know, Monday through Friday. And it was literally like brain dump, everything that was in school, what their homework was, what we were doing, what I was working on. And it really set up our evenings because everybody was in different directions at that point. Yeah. And it, we had that time. It was so much fun. So, yes. I love that. Yeah. Cause it, I'm incoherent in the morning. So when they were, well, and that's what school, I was... the crack of six 30, <laughs> like it's not happening. Yes. I get that. And what I've done in that interest as well is I did spend weeks tracking what I did every day for like every five to 10 minutes, I'd be writing down what I did, which is tedious. It's ridiculous, mm -hmm. but I did it. And all of a sudden I realized I am more productive at this time of day. I'm less productive at this time of day. And 
I started to see trends and we all have our own trends. Mine is not to be an early person, but my husband is. So we had to meet in the middle, that type of thing. But I learned like when at 315, that interruption's coming, your entire day is better if you take time and embrace that and lean into that relationship and that conversation, then that 15 yeah. minutes buys you back an hour because you oh, did yeah. it then. And that's something that I, a time diary, I was like, I'm blanking on what it's called. It's a, a time diary or something like that, where you track your time, you'll begin to see where you waste time and where you're most productive. Mm-hmm. So the times that I'm most productive, as far as like sitting down, knocking something out that I need to work on, that's when I make sure I'm sitting in front of my computer because that's when I'm going to be most effective. But if maybe after lunch, I'm not that productive, then that may not be the best time for me to sit down and work. That might be a better time for me to schedule a call that's going to pull me out of that slump or schedule a walk because I know I just need that recharge and getting outside for a little bit will make all the difference in the world. And so that's another way that I have kind of combated that as well, which is exactly what you did. I love that. That's something I need to remind myself of as a mom too. I often will want to just lean in and get something done and then we'll do this and then we'll play. Then I'll hear your story. And that's not always the best way to tackle something like that. So that's awesome. That was good for me to hear. (laughs) Awesome. Wonderful. We can share brilliance. I want to dive in really quickly too with for somebody who's like, oh my God, I need to delegate, right? Like I've got big goals and I'm doing too much, even if they have one or two people. How do you get started with that? Like, what's the kind of jumping off point for them to really look at their business and be like, oh, these are the areas I need to get help with? Yeah. So this is a routine thing I do. Not every day by any means, but it's something that I consistently go back to every time I'm feeling like I need something off my plate. I'm overloaded. I need to outsource more because outsourcing is addicting. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way, but you, once you realize and feel the relief from outsourcing and the peace of mind and just the ability to embrace more in your life, I start to get overwhelmed. And then I try to outsource more things when I get overwhelmed so that I'm not overwhelmed anymore. And how I do that starting from the beginning. So if you're just now starting out or you're just starting to feel that overwhelm again, I reground myself by going back to a, what I call an everything list. I write down everything that I'm responsible for that's on my plate that I have to do. If I don't do it, it won't get done. That type of a thing. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too small to be on that list. It encompasses everything. So household, work, school, any of those things. And then I start checking the ones that I personally have to touch. I can't outsource podcast interviews or podcast episodes. That is me. That is on my plate. I have to do that. So that's not something I'm outsourcing. And I'm passionate about it. Enjoy it. I wouldn't want to. But there are other things that I can outsource. So as you figure out what you have to touch personally, then I then look at everything else. And that's all free game for outsourcing. So then I start looking at what do I keep putting off? What do I dread? What do I never seem to get to because those are the things that I really don't want to do. They're the things I'm least passionate about, probably least good at. If I had to guess, you know, there are various reasons as to why those things exist, but they're not getting done. So that's the ultimate thing. And I start to see trends and I imagine other people would too, where I am not inclined towards numbers. So anything that has to do with my bookkeeping and financial reports and invoicing and all of that, it's just always on my to-do list, never want to get to it. So that would mean you need to start hiring a bookkeeper, but you do your social media because it's kind of fun and you like the graphics and the colors and it's a play thing for you. Okay, well, you can keep that until you realize that maybe that's not the best course of action for you, or maybe you're the exact opposite. You enjoy the numbers that's relaxing and you like that, but you don't want to touch graphics and social media and dealing with that. So then, you know, you need a creative. So you need to hire a web designer or a a social media expert, graphic designer, something of that nature. And you're going to see trends in the things that you're ignoring and the things that are left over that you don't need to touch. And I tend to say, start with the one that you just really dread the most or start with the one that's most impactful in your business. Like there are different ways to make that decision as to what makes the most sense for you. And it might also be start with the one that's available. You might know somebody who can do X, Y, Z. So that might make sense as long as they're an expert. I don't really recommend outsourcing business things to friends and that type of thing. I have hired friends and it's worked out well, but that's very rare. But outsourcing those tasks to an expert in whatever they are. So 
that means different things for whatever it is, then all of a sudden those things are getting done so much more quickly, so much more effective. And your results are just exponential in those areas that then frees up your time to do more of the things on your list. And you can lean into those things that you love and enjoy as you continue to outsource other things. And it's- why it's addicting. <laughs> Why I say every time I delegate addicting. or I, I hire somebody, it's I'm like, woohoo, freedom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so, so great. Do you have a resource that you could point people to that would help them? Yes. Actually, what I was just describing is a digital download that I could make available to your listeners. I can, we can yeah, have my team cool. get that information to you. And They can kind of use, it's just a a nice little PDF that will help them think through that process and work through that. So we can certainly set that up and put that in show notes or something like that. We'll get it in the show notes for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Rachel, this has been fantastic. You and I had already established we could chat all day about. (laughs) Yes, I think we could. Anything else. One piece of advice, like one quick thing. And you've already given so much, but one more quick thing that somebody can do to take back their time and really scale. Because for me, it's getting back time, but it's also growing bigger so that you can have, you know, more ability to serve more people. Yeah. I would say to get over that hesitancy to take that next step. So many times we are hesitant to outsource and we think, well, I'll just do it. And then next month comes around and oh, I'll just do it and keep doing that. And we keep wasting our own time. And so I would say my word of advice or my one thing that I would encourage is to just take that leap, send that email, send that call, do that Google search to find that relief and take that action. Cause so many times people sit on it and they keep thinking I'll get to it, but it becomes another thing on your to-do list. <laughs> and so that would probably be what I would recommend you're worth taking that action in that step. And it's definitely worth it to, to do that so that you can have your time back and lean into the things that you're passionate about. Which is perfect because if somebody's ready to do that and they need to get over it, they should reach out to you and (laughs) how can they connect with you? Yes. So that is an option for sure. If you wanted to learn more about the whole outsourcing thing and what that looks like, you can actually learn more about my journey and what I learned and went through over the last 10 plus years, figuring it all out. I have a podcast called Checking Off Your List with Rachel Luther, and you can check that out on any of the places where you listen. You can find me online as well to just kind of keep up and see what's going on and gain little tidbits on Instagram at Rachel Luther and Facebook at Checking Off Your List with Rachel Luther. And you can also find my company on a business side. Like if you are looking for an outsourcing resource, my company, that is what we do, all back office support. And you can find us at checkoffyourlist.com and then on Facebook and Instagram, et cetera, LinkedIn, all the things at Check Off Your List. (laughs) All the social places. Yes, yes. Rachel, thank you so much for being on. This has been so much fun. And I'm really glad that we were able to connect and for you to be able to share all of your brilliance. It was my pleasure. Awesome. And for everybody listening, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for being a listener of the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I am so grateful for each and every episode that you tune in and listen to. And I hope that you get a ton of value that you can implement starting today. I do have just a quick favor. If you wouldn't mind hopping on to wherever it is that you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review, it would help us tremendously so that the Tribe of Leaders podcast can be found more easily and help inspire other entrepreneurial leaders.